Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, you you raised uh, so many uh, good points, and it, it just I think for some people it's hard to tell like what the courts are responsible mm -hmm. for and what the cops are responsible for. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm just so frustrated. It is, yeah, it's, it's definitely. We're bringing on right now in the KUF News Zoom room uh, Beauty Camacho, who is actually an ex-girlfriend of this uh, murder suspect, uh, John Richard Bass uh, III. And we're talking with Sergeant Tapal about um, what's being characterized by uh, the murder victim, Virginia Glotnia's family, as a, a system of failure because um, apparently in a Facebook uh, post, can I get see that, Jay? Um, she writes in here, Mailing Parade, and this is the sister of uh, murder victim Virginia, Virginia LaGuardia. She writes, please pray for my family and especially my sister's daughters. Forgive me for my rant. For lack of better words, my emotions are all over the place. My baby sister had been trying to leave him, reported him multiple times to the police for the things he was doing. Nothing was being done because we couldn't prove he slashed the tires or he didn't say the words, kill even though all the signs pointed to this. Nothing. And now my baby sister's life was taken, and this MF is still out there. And so we wanted to bring on Beauty Camacho, because uh, Beauty, when a lot of these uh, screenshots were going around before uh, the suspect was apprehended, there was one that was going around where you were kind of sharing your experience of having a dating this, dated this guy, and having dealt with the whole system of you know and we're gonna let you tell the story um but i mean you had a restraining order against this guy correct right right and see the thing about it is i actually didn't realize because i he, he hadn't crossed my mind in such a long time i didn't realize that my restraining order expired last or just this april and i was like oh my gosh this is this is so so weird to see and feel and it's heartbreaking because when from me i'm tracking i'm keeping record of all of the things that he's done to me and then as as i started to realize all of these small lies while we were in a relationship i couldn't prove it so that's what i did i, I continued to um stay connected with him to to learn what these are because uh into like just listening to my instinct just listening to my intuition i don't know what i'm going through this for But it's for a reason, and I've reported him over nine times, not just harassment, not just digital harassment, not just social media harassment, not just sexual harassment, for sex or anything like that. It was also burglary. It was also spoofed calls. He called me thousands of time, times, and if nobody knows what a, if you don't know what a spoof call is, He's basically using a program or an app to call my phone, making it seem like my friends and family are the ones who are calling me. And on the end of the call, it would either be heavy breathing or him pleading to, to, for me to take him back or um, random rants. And that's where it started after I kicked him out because before I kicked him out of my house, before we broke up, I asked him, I said, do you feel like you need to go to Guam Behavioral Health to get an assessment? And when he declined that, I said, okay, you know, that's, that's it. I'm going to take this seriously and protect my peace now. You need to leave. And I kicked him out of my house. And after we broke up, it was nine months of just torture, like, social, like, like I mentioned, all the digital harassment, social media harassment um the spoof calls he would break into my home and when i and when i would report him on all these violations it was it was quite frustrating because reporting it to the police department takes a long time about maybe 45 minutes to two hours depending on how busy they are and you know i'm 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 a community leader i i'm here to provide i'm here to to be of service and I'm, I'm very respectful of the authorities and their time. So yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait until I'm able to file to file all of these crimes against my restraining order. And the reason why I, I asked for a restraining order is because he committed suicide. He tried to commit suicide in front of me twice. And more so the restraining order wasn't to protect myself against him. It was for me to not go into mama bear mode 
the next time he comes next to me and have to defend myself and my children. And then a little bit of a backstory is I've been arrested before for domestic violence because I was defending myself. And the other person who was involved in that case wasn't arrested in, with that domestic violence case. So if you think about it, how am I gonna continue to protect myself without trying to defend myself, right? How, how, how is that possible? And then to okay. also try to, to call in for help for the police department when somebody has come to your house and they have a machete in their hand and you, the only thing that you have is a pot and you run back into your car to lock it and to call the police, yet they're still telling you to wait and not, you know, you know, not interact. But then when, by the time they come here, he's gonna be gone. And that's just one incident where I actually went and I, I tracked, I tried to run through the, Lattie, the park in Laddie Heights and I used my car to just look for him, not to, try to, not to try to engage with him, but just to look for him so I don't lose him. So at least I know that I can stay on the phone with the police and look for him. And this was, this was when, um, this was in October 6 of 2018, when I found him, I could smell his sweat in my home and I broke up with him in June of 2018. So it had been going on for such a long time already. And when I caught him in my home, I found like a duffel bag full of items, groceries, my clothes, his clothes, and all of these other little knickknacks that he just took from the house. And sorry, I'm just so, I'm so, I'm so frazzled because of how many times I've tried to report him and tried to report this pattern, yet nothing was done. But then one day I went online and I started researching more about him and I saw that he had an open warrant for arrest against the courts. And within the next two days, I saw him walking on the road as I was driving to um, another place. And I said, okay, so this, this, is, this means something. What am I supposed to do about it? If I see him right in front of me, what am I supposed to do about it? So what I did for the next hour was go house to house in that little in that little area of the village. And I asked, I showed them, I have, I had a picture, I have his ID, I have a picture of him shaved, I have a picture of him full with full hair. And I showed them his ID and everything. And I said, Have you guys seen this person? He's not at the moment, he's not dangerous, but He's been bothering me and my family, and I really, I would really appreciate your help. And I did that for an hour, just going all around. Finally, when I found out where he was staying, I just broke down in tears because, because it was, it was frustrating going through that for about four months, you know. And that's when I called the court marshals, and I said, I have his location. What are we gonna do about it? Because you guys are, you guys are the ones who want him he's here what's the next step yeah. and from there that's when they continue to just kind of coach me on what to do where where to where to wait and i think it took about maybe uh two to three hours until they actually came to to apprehend him and even that even just with that is frustrating you know like Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be as smart as res and resourceful as I possibly can, but what about the people who can't? What about the people who aren't as resourceful and, and, and just, you know, trying to think with their intuition and trying to protect themselves? It's, that's where the gap is, you know? It's, it's really frustrating to see that, that I've reported his pattern so many times and still it, it came to this. <sighs> Yesterday was just so hard. Sunday was really challenging, but it's not as challenging as being a part of the family who's lost their sister, their mom, their auntie, their cousin, their friend. And I get all these phone calls from the people who are just saying, beauty, thank you for going online and, and showing us that this person is this person because nobody wants to believe us because of his stupid obituary, which was fake. And of course, you know, being, being Islanders, we're going to respect someone's death, right? We're going to respect someone's death. And to see that fake obituary, it just made my blood boil when I first saw it. 
because the person who posted it was from Facebook, but that's also just Richie. It was just his fake Facebook, another fake Facebook account that he had. And I don't know, it's just, it's just really, really frustrating to be a part of the history of it because I feel like I've done everything by the book. I've done everything by the book that, that, that we've been told to do. I don't want to die. I don't want to go back to jail. I don't want to, to be imprisoned for murdering someone, especially when, when I'm trying to protect myself and my babies. What can we do in that situation besides, oh, just, we're just going to take pictures? We're just going to take screenshots? That's how we're going to protect ourselves? Beauty, when you when you, when you tell us that, that you you know you reported him nine times, when when you see these social media posts from Virginia Lagwatnia's family talking about how they had a history and she was trying to leave him, that you know they had contacted police. I gotta ask if if law enforcement, the courts had done their job. Do you think Virginia Lagwatnia would be alive today? I believe they did their job, but I feel like. I feel that there's just an action, an action step or three that's missing, that's connecting all of these systems. I, and I, I, oh, I heard um, Sergeant Tupau mention that yes, there's a system, but it needs to be faster. Like we're gonna wait hours and days and weeks and months, and in my case, years until this happens. That's too long. That's too long, especially when the pattern is so consistent already these the the events that i have here on my paper these aren't even single events these are compressed events and compressed series of harassment it's not it's it's just like a, a headliner so in reality it's way more every single time richie called me is a violation every single time he took a screenshot of me or posted about me on Facebook was a violation. Every time he mentioned my name was a violation. And I'm, I'm going to try to keep track of that as best as I can because I have family and friends out there who, you know, of course support me too. But I really felt like I, I was playing cat and mice with, with him. And it's like he was enjoying it. <coughs> but it's it, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's it's just been so frustrating to see that I've I've done this already. I've done the work. I've done the research about him, and I've presented it right. And to just have that kind of just slammed in your face, like oh, sorry, miss, we can't do anything about that. When I have the proof here, also. And the only time there was really hard action about it was when I brought up that he had an award a warrant for arrest for. Sorry, let me just read it. We had a warrant for arrest for um, uh, with the marshal's division for assault on a peace officer. Right. And I was like, okay, you know what? If that was if that was gonna bring me a, just a sliver of peace this year, I'm gonna do it. And it only put him away for about two weeks or so. If if my if my restraining order violations were compounded on that, it might have given more time. He might have been able to get assessed at Guam Behavioral. He might have been able to get medication. He might have been able to be sent back to wherever he came from, whatever it may be. And there's just so many there's just so many versions of it. There's so many you know opportunities and possibilities of what we can do as a community, but what is what what are we going to do about the, the flaws in the system though not everybody is equipped with a smartphone or a laptop to be able to record all the violations that they have not everybody's able to not everybody's able to drive to the police department to make a freaking restraining order um complaint or a violation report right beauty and these, these restraining orders it sounds like uh that's a big issue i have a cousin who has had her case just winding through the court. She and and like you, she did her part. She went and she got a restraining order against an individual who had a history of uh, beating her. 
Um, but the trouble is when this guy violates his restraining order, like you said, when they call the court or they call whoever, it's just a bunch of like, hold on, wait, you know, do five backflips and we'll get back to you. So I don't know who's responsible if it's the marshals are too busy, you know, weightlifting and getting tattoos to get out here and do their jobs. Because it's real. We hear about it. Man, there was three stories that we just read yesterday, Jay, where the suspect in these different crimes had a restraining order from a previous case against the same victim. So somebody out there, some bodies out there, is not doing their job. And I don't like this GPD blaming the courts and courts blaming GPD. I mean, look at these survivors, these victims. They don't always and survive. Surviving is exhausting. That's the thing about it. Surviving is exhausting. Can you imagine nine months of that type of harassment, thousands of spoof calls a day? I had to turn off my phone. At one point, the spoof number was from the Dededo Police Department. And here I oh am thinking, God. oh my gosh, wow, they're actually coming to call to, you know, talk to me. And when I answer the phone, it's not the Dededo Police Department, it's Richie on the line huffing and puffing about whatever it is that he wants to complain about that day. And I'm just like, what? How am I going to thrive as a business owner? How am I going to, you know, make sure that my, if, if in case there's an emergency with my kids, Chris and Sabrina, how, how am I going to make sure that that's, that that's them? And that was the scary part too, was there was an emergency with my son at one point. And Richie kept calling me. He kept calling me, calling me, calling me that my line was so backed up, I couldn't call my, my son's school to make sure that he was okay. And that that's just like, I know I'm a strong person, but the people, that's going to drive somebody crazy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there are there are our advocates. I'm an advocate too. I'm an applied suicide intervention skills training trainer, right? I know what to do. I know what to do in these types of situations. But the thing about it is, how are we going to continue to educate others on how to not enter these types of relationships as well and not get it to the point where we have to defend ourselves when we are trying to break free and we realize those red flags and that toxicity when we see it so much from our culture where, yeah, our family and our friends are inviting people into our lives because of that hafere spirit. But we don't see the the grown part. We don't see the hard part of when it happens to sever those relationships that are bad. We don't see that that often because sometimes people just avoid it. They don't talk to people or they just hang up. They don't have the conversation with the family saying, this is what we need to do about this person because he's either bothering your grandma and your grandpa, or whoever it may be, right? And this is what we need to do about it. There, those conversations aren't, are very, very rare. And like uh, Sergeant Paul said, yes, it, it is a community effort and it's not just GPD and it's not just the marshals, but what are we gonna do about that missing link to save people's lives? There, there's, there's an act. There, like I said, there's action steps missing in, in that, in that process. Because I had to be the one to get him arrested. I had to be the one to, to say, he, oh, here, here's an idea. This is how we can lock him up. And it's exhausting. And I know that the, the authorities, all of you guys who are using your power to do that, to search for him, you know, and to 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 really go out there and make sure he was caught. I know that's exhausting too, but it could have been prevented. It could have been prevented ever since 2018 or even before that when uh, from the other people who have dated him as well or seen him or hung out with him who have reported similar things. I don't know if it was a police report or anything like that, but I kept track of what my experiences were because I knew I had to keep a file of it. I didn't know what it was for, but I knew I had to keep a file of it to 
just that's just my gut feeling and i i trust it so much well beauty uh, thank but thank I'm you so much for you having the courage to to come on the show and to, to share your story and i hope i hope there's people out there listening who you know take notes of this and uh, look at their situation and uh you know take that stand that they need to, to take before something terrible happens yeah. thank you beauty thanks beauty thank you so much guys god bless you take Thanks care too. all right we're gonna uh, take a quick break and we're coming back with more of the link next good morning catch sports link on the kuam news morning show the link every friday